Is the internet, you know, feeling a bit old school? Are you curious about the buzzwords like blockchain, crypto, and digital ownership, but feel like it's all written in a secret language? Well, you're not wrong. The internet is undergoing a massive transformation. And if you don't understand the foundational changes happening, you risk being left behind in a truly revolutionary shift. This isn't just about new apps. It's about a fundamental re-architecture of how we interact online, especially with our money. Cracking the code of Web3 and decentralized finance isn't just for tech geeks anymore. It's essential knowledge for anyone who wants to navigate the digital future, protect their data, and unlock new financial opportunities. This video is your plain language guide to understanding these powerful concepts, empowering you to participate in the internet's next evolution. Welcome to Cracking the Code, Understanding Web3 and Decentralized Finance. To truly grasp Web3, let's briefly look at what came before. Web1, the first iteration of the internet, was primarily read-only. Think static websites like digital encyclopedias. Web2, the internet we largely use today, is read-write. This brought us social media, user-generated content, and interactive platforms. But here's the catch. Web2 is highly centralized. Huge companies own the platforms, control your data, and act as intermediaries for almost everything you do online, from communicating to transacting. Web3, often called the decentralized web, aims to change this. It envisions an internet where users, not big corporations, own their data, their digital identities, and have more direct control. This is built on foundational technologies like blockchain, which is a decentralized, transparent, and immutable ledger. Instead of data being stored on a single company's servers, it's distributed across a network of computers. This makes it more secure, resistant to censorship, and allows for trustless interactions, meaning you don't have to rely on a central authority to verify transactions or agreements. Think of it as moving from a landlord-owned internet to a co-op where everyone has a say. Now, where does decentralized finance, or DeFi, fit into this? DeFi is essentially the financial arm of Web3. It's an ecosystem of financial applications built directly on blockchain technology, allowing you to perform traditional financial activities like lending, borrowing, trading, and even earning interest, but without the need for traditional intermediaries like banks, brokers, or centralized exchanges. In the traditional financial system, if you want to take out a loan, you go to a bank. If you want to trade stocks, you go to a brokerage. These institutions act as trusted third parties. In DeFi, smart contracts, self-executing agreements whose terms are directly written into code on the blockchain, automate these processes. This means you can lend your cryptocurrency to others and earn interest directly, or borrow assets by providing collateral, all facilitated by code, not by a bank. The key advantages of DeFi are transparency, accessibility, and efficiency. Transactions on the blockchain are publicly verifiable, bringing a new level of transparency. DeFi platforms are permissionless, meaning anyone with an internet connection and a crypto wallet can access them, regardless of their location or credit history, fostering greater financial inclusion. And because intermediaries are removed, transactions can often be faster and come with lower fees. However, it's crucial to understand that DeFi and Web3 are still evolving. Risk include volatility in digital assets, potential vulnerabilities in smart contract code, and a less developed regulatory landscape. It's a rapidly moving space with both immense opportunities and complexities. As you explore, prioritize education, understand the specific protocols you engage with, and never invest more than you are prepared to lose. The future of the internet and finance is being built, and understanding Web3 and DeFi is your key to participating in it. 